second video of the racing chamber. So I know in the last video I said that there'll be some more mods to the motor. But if you followed my social media in the past week or so, you'll know that that motor blew a valve the last time that I had it running. Right after that video I made, last two weeks ago, I uh, had very bad valve flow because the valve springs on the valves were not strong enough to keep up with the high RPMs. So, because of the valve flow, float, I busted the intake valve, so it does not run anymore. And the, I mean, the valve's only eight bucks. I could have bought a new valve, stuck it in there, but I just didn't feel like it. So, I have something very cool for this video. So let's get into it. So as you can see there, that is the old Briggs 11 horsepower. I just stuck it below the mower because it was uh, going to rain for the next couple of days. So I had the top on here and that would kind of protect the motor and stuff. But as you can see how well that worked out, the whole cover came off anyway. Yeah, oh well. So this is what I have gotten as a motor replacement. I got this motor from my friend Todd. Well, it's a YouTube channel, which I'll link in the description. And this is a 16 and a horsepower Tecumseh engine. It is a single cylinder. And I'm thinking it's probably late 80s, or early 90s is uh, the age of this motor. Now, this motor does have some issues. None of it is uh, running-wise, as far as I know. He said it ran good. The issues are, is I have two good mounting bolts. And the other two are bad. One is stripped out. The other one is, uh, it has a bolt inside of it, broken off. So I gotta figure that out. And then the second issue here is the wires coming out of here, which I think are just the charging wires. They're cut, so I gotta figure something out with that. And I gotta get a new fuel line, possibly. But this came out of a scrap pile, so there's some dirt and junk in here, but it'll all self-clean. And then he also gave me a different motor to use, because he gave me two, to see which one would work. And this one, in my opinion, was the better one of the two. The other one that he gave me was an Briggs Opposed Twin, 17 horsepower. So it had two cylinders coming out sideways, not a V-twin, but an Opposed Twin, so they're equally distant from each other, from the shaft, in a straight line. And that one had an engine knock, he said and it didn't have a uh, charging coil, which I don't know if it did or not. I thought there's still wires coming to the spark plug. But he said that was taken off to put on his dad's lawnmower. And uh, it just didn't seem like it was really worth it at the time to get that one going since it sounded like it needed more work and this one was already ready to go. So really all I gotta do is just mount it, but I'll probably do that in a s like later. That's not gonna be my main thing here. I wanna see if the motor will run first. So let's uh, let's do that. Now the next thing here is to get this mower away from this because I don't really want to be working on it back here. There's too many weeds and too much crap so I'll probably move it over there just so that I can get to it easier. I'll give you a nice uh, look around at the mower here. So it's it came out of a husky lawnmower supposedly. But it's got overhead valves and all that junk, so that's nice. I can easily change the valve springs. This is that charging wire I said that was cut. Probably wouldn't have been the same thing, but I'll probably just strip these and shove them in there and put it on. It'll be fine. I already got this one hooked up on the starter. This is probably ground of some sort. I know this will go up here, like the older one, like the uh, Briggs, so that'll go there. And I think this here I'll connect to this one over here somehow I'll figure that out that'll be that and this one does not come with a muffler so it's already straight piped which will be very loud so I'm guessing this is a bigger engine than the other one I mean obviously as this thing's heavy 
and uh, it has an oil filter which is quite oh wow I already spider webs on here just clean this off two days ago anyway it's got an oil filter so that's pretty interesting for a motor like this and the throttle linkage is kind of froze so I'm going to have to WD-40 that a bit and I already put this on there from the Briggs that'll be for the uh, the connection from there to there hook it up and then this is the gas line so I'm going to take that off and try to clean it out it does look kind of crapped the line I'm not a fan but this one here that's already on the gas is I think too short to get there so I'm going to have to use it anyway it'll be fine so you can see right there, this is the bolt that I was trying to get off. Just snapped right off. So, uh, yeah, that's cute. So no, uh, no grounding there. I gotta figure out a different spot to put this grounding wire now. Um, let me see here. I wonder if I can just. Yeah. That'll work. Yeah, that works for me. Just kind of shove it in there. Just put it in this way so it's not hanging out. There we go. So, that's supposedly grounded. I wonder if... Oh, I don't even think I had the battery in there. I think I took it out. I did. I'll also put the battery back in this thing to try to see if I can start it. Weird thing with this Tecumseh engine. The uh, this thing here does not spin. Wait, it doesn't. Maybe it does not. I'm not sure. I gotta keep this. Yeah, that that hole right there was plugged up with dirt. But it turned out just being an Allen head in there, so that's not a huge issue. This wire here is gonna an interesting one because I don't know what that goes to. It's some sort of grounding. One of the grounding is over here. It's a different style of connector. So I don't know. Hope for the best, I guess. And then this year I got strips, so uh, look at this. So right now I'm just going to dump the gas back in this can here so I don't keep dumping it out. Okay, that's about all I'm going to get out of that. Maybe there's a drip in. I'm thinking that's all the gas that's in there. Let me grab my needle nose. Oh, gas line. It might actually be easier to take the air cleaner off. Now I've already checked the air cleaner on this. I did, a little, I did a quick look through when I first got this motor just to see what it looked like. And uh, the air cleaner, the outside part was disintegrated so it just all came off. Which is alright. It's less stuff to be restrictive. I'm okay with that. Probably 716. Yes, it is. Okay. Come see. This is my first Tecumseh motor. Never owned one. A friend of mine had a uh, old Sears lawnmower from like the 70s. And that had a Tecumseh in it, but I never owned a Tecumseh myself. Looks like I could put a regular carb on this, which is cool. I also didn't need to take out the airbox, but whatever. Look at it. And yeah, how's that coming off? It's just. Oh, there's some breathers and junk. I don't feel like it. it's too much work. Just try to punch the line from the other side. So definitely there will be a upgraded carb on this in the future since it's in a better position than the brakes. The brakes had to like... I don't even think it was able to have a custom airbox. Or a, a normal airbox. This one does. So I can just stick it right there and with a, like a 45 coming out. That'll be good. 
gas lines better come out. All right, the gas is hooked up now. Now I just got to put gas back in the tank and see if it'll start. All right, so if you can see, the bowl seems to be uh, dripping, meaning that the float is stuck. But I'm just going to start it anyway because I want to see what this thing sounds like. So I'm going to get this set up. I already got the battery installed, so I'm good there. I'm going to hope it has enough juice to get going. I'm going to turn off the light because that might help. Uh, I don't even think there was a choke before on this. Probably just all the uh, same thing as the other setup. Get on here so that I can control this thing. Well, it does seem that this does move with the crankshaft. I'm wondering if this motor is seized slightly. I didn't check before. I just, huh. I'll have to try that out. This doesn't seem like a good sign to me. Big corrosion, lots of rust, didn't come out very easy. I'm not sure. Okay, so she was a little locked from sitting, so I had to thread a bolt into the crankshaft and use a ratchet and just crank it. Go back, go forth, go back, go forth, until eventually it moves. So, let's see if it starts. Alright. And it does seem to be that the throttle is also the choke. Promising. Very promising. It's trying. It's trying really hard. Could be that carburetor. Interesting. Very, very interesting. Okay, so valve cover, which you can't see, it's not in focus. That's better. This is the valve cover right here. So I'm gonna go the opposite direction. Now I'm gonna take this off. Maybe not the gear wrench side because this doesn't want to go. Take off the valve cover and see what it looks like in there. This is all pretty dirty. I probably should clean that off. That sounded rough. Is this two on here? No, there's four. See, this is so much better than the flatheads. It makes the valve so much easier. Now, I won't be able to see the piston this time. See how that looks. I don't know what the piston looks like. This one could be pretty clapped. It could be uh, immaculate. Who knows? I'm guessing it's going to look pretty clapped, though. But it'll probably all self-clear once it runs. She's toasty in there. So... Looks to be a little rusty. Uh, this is not that hot. Okay, so there's a good, good gap. Let me just see what happens here. Dummy. Leave that in there. The valves are indeed working, which is a good thing. bad but it was running and then uh, the motor just stopped it made a squealing noise like it ran out of oil so I'm gonna check the oil when I brought this thing home I did have it upside down so that probably wasn't a great thing oh <laughs> yeah she needs oil 
bad, real bad. So I'm gonna put some oil in here. Well, that was dumb of me. I ran out of oil. I thought uh, this thing had enough in it when I brought it home, but I guess I was wrong. And the carburetor is leaking again, so that's not awesome. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. Yeah. She needs oil. the valve cover back on. So I'm going to put that back on there. So I'm thinking, oh boy, yeah, it's going to be wrench again. Trying to get all that to move. So that's going to be fun. I'll have to get back down there with the sixteenths. There's only five eighths. Let's see if I can get the chip. Okay, here's where I'm at. So the motor is indeed free. And I filled it up to pretty much where it should be for oil. Using various different oils that I had around the house. So I have SAE 0W20 in there. Some uh, SAE 30, some uh, 10W30. It's got a mixture of oils, but some mixture of oil will do just fine for this motor, hopefully for now. And now I'm at the point where I wanted to start it, but I realized that the gas tank came unplugged because gas got everywhere when I filled up the gas tank. So that's not cool. I mean, this needs to come off, but I don't know how. I don't know, maybe I can just look. Oof. Yeah, right off. Right off. Alright, so gas tank was clapped, so I made my own. So I'm just going to lay that up. It's not leaking yet, which is a good thing. At least not that bad. It started picking up towards the end, which is good, but, um, yeah, I don't know how good that kill switch is. That's the problem, definitely. 
If I can't, well, I guess I could have yanked the spark plug. I should have did that instead of cutting the gas. But wow, that took a while for it to run out of gas too. Jeez. So what it seems to be is that the governor on here, it's froze up and it's stuck at high rev all the time, which is yikes. Um, yeah, I guess the. I tried, fi I tried getting the governor to move and it just broke off the top of the carb. So that's not a good thing, but for the huge mess that I made here, I mean, running it off of a Penn's oil, oil container. But it is running, and the more I ran it, I didn't get it on tape because I was trying to get it to run better. I switched it, uh, the spark plug to the one that was in the Briggs over there, and it did like no, no difference really. So I just put the original one back in, but I cleaned it more before I put it back in. And it seemed to run a little bit better, but I shut it down because it was running at high RPMs, and I almost think it wasn't governed at all. It might have been, uh, but I didn't really want to push it. And uh, if you can't see in here, I apologize, but this right here is the throttle governor setup. And when I was trying to get it to free itself up because it was stuck it just broke off on the top so I need a new carburetor for sure the bowl leaks I don't think it is anymore but even when I uh, held the the float up it was still kind of leaking so that's clapped and uh, the air cleaner is still fine I, I'll save the air box for this thing because it seems to be fine and I did figure out the issue with it uh, running away because the uh, when I got it running good this switch did nothing I couldn't get it to shut off so I'd have so I tried running it out of gas it didn't run out of gas for some reason it took forever to run out of gas but then I then I was just at the point where I was just pulling off the spark plug to shut it down and then I realized okay something's not right here so this right here this green wire coming out of the motor and this black wire that came out of the mower somewhere in this plastic this is the kill this is the kill switch so I got a paper clip put it into the plastic and then this end onto the metal and it kills it. It may be pretty jank but I'm gonna wrap it in some electrical tape later just so it doesn't get shorted out on anything. And I did run the headlights off of this too so that means that this charging wire is the charging wire so I have to uh, like tape that up so it won't come apart because it's kinda loose right now. But yes I say this is a pretty good success oh boy um, oh, don't leave that there because it melted to the exhaust yikes uh, yeah it definitely is going to need a muffler because this thing is so loud it's a lot I almost think it's louder than the Briggs over there and that's pretty tough to beat it's just super loud and the muffler that I have that came with the Briggs does not work with this mower or this motor, not more. It just doesn't want to work with it. So I'll have to figure something out. Maybe I'll send a pipe somewhere. I don't know. It's just loud. But it does, uh, when it's closed, it does look better. You got a whole motor in there now. It looks like a full motor. This, that one over there kind of looks small in here. I mean, here it's empty looking, but it just looks like a fuller motor like it's it's filled it's filled its spot yeah I'm pretty happy with it I think the only things I gotta do now is uh, repair the gas tank because the seal on the bottom came off that's why I don't have the steering wheel or anything on here because it's to remind me I gotta fix that so it won't be moving anytime soon because of the lack of gas tank and plus there's still two uh, engine mount bolts that aren't connected so when this thing runs it flops around so I need to uh, get a bigger bolt to shove in the one that's ground out and then I have to figure out how to get the one out that is in there I'm thinking I'm just gonna send a self tapping uh, screw in there and then like pull it out and then get some Loctite and Loctite the screw in there let it sit overnight and then just yank the whole screw and what's left of the bolt out I'm hoping that'll work if it doesn't then yeah, it'll just be three motor mounts, which is better than two. It's not as good as four, but it'll be fine. 
Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Like and subscribe for more content. And hopefully this thing will be driving again in the next video.